The Legend of Robin Hood, read by the author, Christa Berg. Come away with me on a journey back in time. Many years after the events of medieval days, and imagine you're in a tavern and part of a large expectant crowd awaiting tonight's performance. Candles flicker in the darkness. Cups, glasses and flagons are filled with beer and wine. The crowd settle themselves on benches, chairs and bales of straw as a group of musicians, singers, dancers and poets assemble on the stage in front of you. A hush falls on the audience as one man begins to speak. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I am the storyteller, and my friends and I will endeavor to amuse, surprise, and charm you with our presentation here this evening. We will take you on a journey to the 12th century, to the reign of King Richard of England, Richard the Lionheart, Richard Coeur de Lyon. It was a time of great turmoil and disruption all over Europe and the Middle East, with endless battles and strife, crusades and skirmishes, castles and kings. Into this world was born Robert of Loxley, to be known as Robin, the son of the Earl of Huntington, a boy who was destined to have one of the most enduring names in history, who would be known for centuries to come as Robin Hood. Heroes are not born, they have heroism thrust upon them. And so it was with Robert of Loxley. His childhood was one of privilege and comfort, yet he worked hard and excelled in archery, swordplay and horsemanship and the healthy pursuits of outdoor life. His companion during his early years was Guy of Gisborne, the son of the Earl's Castellan, who worked for the Earl as estate manager and assistant. The two young boys would often be found in the forests and woods around Huntingdon Castle, trying to outdo each other with sword and bow. But in later years, this friendship would fall apart, because the gap in their social positions would become an unspoken burden between them, and for Guy, it would turn into jealousy and hatred, as he would harbor growing resentment for his former friend's natural abilities not only in archery and swordsmanship, but also for the easy way Robin behaved in society and with the ladies. However, and as you will discover in our story, Robin was no different to many a teenager, seething with resentment under his father's rigid control and having little interest in remaining at Huntington Castle with years of estate management ahead of him. He wanted more than this, he wanted to experience life, a life that he'd heard about from the travelers who had dined at his father's table with stories of a world beyond. And, like so many young men of his age, he had hopes and dreams that seemed forever doomed to disappointment, lost and forgotten on the treadmill of daily life. In many ways, Robin remained very much a character from our times, even today, who finally and indeed most reluctantly, answered the call to fight injustice simply because he was one of the few people in a position to actually do something to change lives for the better. From this seed grew an oak that has become known all over the world, a tree that has withstood the ravages of time, a tree that will stand forever as a symbol of fortitude, resilience and courage. So now, ladies and gentlemen, my friends and I would like to present to you the legend of of Robin Hood. Come near to me and I will tell the tale of Robin Hood. Robin Hood. Robin Hood. And though he was a noble man, was for the common good. A man of the people. And a hero to us all For he robbed from the rich And he gave it to the poor The 
wedding feast. The kitchens of Huntington Castle were a frenzy of activity. Great cauldrons of boiling water were filled with meats and poultry. Whole pigs turned on spits above leaping flames. Fruits and vegetables were being prepared. Breads were being made. Yells, shouts and curses filled the air as the kitchen staff worked hard to prepare the feast for the wedding guests who were arriving from the ceremony in the nearby chapel. The huge oak table in the banqueting hall was already groaning with a large selection of foods to impress and delight the assembled crowd. Roast chicken, venison, mutton, wild game of various sorts from the forest.